Welcome everyone. My name is Pam Turner. I'll be the moderator for this morning's class. And welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school, not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States and certain other foreign countries. The Tampa branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce you the Dean of the Tampa branch, Dr. Joel Turner, and our president, Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles, not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in our own English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, Everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the savior during the time <clears throat> he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in the school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. 
It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of the Institute are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby a man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning we'll have class dedicated in prayer by Dr. Gail Josephson. Uh, she's visiting with our class from Green Bay. We're happy to have you with us. And we will have a musical selection by Dr. Lisa Zizi. Our scripture will be read by Dr. Sherry Williams, and our scripture readers are um, Sherry Williams and um, Cynthia Smith. And our scripture this morning is Romans the eighth chapter, verses one through 18. And then we go ahead and I'm gonna unmute Gail. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. Let us all bow our hearts and our minds unto Yahshua the Messiah. Thank you for inviting me to this gathering. Um, thank you, Yahshua, for allowing these wonderful classes to continue through your cloud. <laughs> um, and I just pray that we're all safe and that you continue to let us grow in this gospel. And we thank you that this gospel is still being preached. And we're all waiting for the day when we can all be together. Let's all say in Yahshua's name, hallelujah. 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 Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unmute my musical um, person. <laughs> Lisa? Hello. Hey, Lisa. Hi. So I'm doing the solos for now until we kind of figure out other people maybe could do stuff. Um, but I'm happy to share what Yash was giving me. So um, Judith has actually been helping me figure it out. So we're putting, this is a weird shot, but we want the guitar closer to the mic and I have to use my phone right now. Okay. <clears throat> right, this uh, song. All right. Uh, listen to the waves. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> Hello, child, hear my word. I am Yahweh. Let your heart find rest. I waited just for you. Listen and hear clearly. I am calling. Just listen to the waves knocking on the shore. See the eagle soaring, the faithless in the sun. The storms tear the feathers to the sun, she bears her young. Every beat of the wings glorifies my name. Just listen to the waves knocking on the shore. Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. Dolphins are always smiling, for joy they live their days. The long sea journey, they won't lose their way. They breathe a breath of heaven, they breathe by name. Just listen to the waves knocking on the shore. On the clearing is trumpet sounds, the sanctuary is near. Refreshing me by his eyes, his cool, crisp and clear. So the earth rolls by the way, till elephants gather behind. To appreciate the waves, nothing on the shore. Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh. Hello, child, hear my word. I am Yahweh. Let your heart find rest. I waited just for you. Listen and hear me. I am calling. Just listen to the waves knocking on the shore. Yahweh, 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 Thank you. Right on. Thank you, Lisa. All right, next up we have I'm going to unmute Sherry for the scripture. Good morning. 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 I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 18. <clears throat> There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh because of sin, to condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. 
For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can it be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh, but they are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of Yahweh dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. And if the Messiah be in you, the body is dead because of sins, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Yahshua from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the desires of the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the spirit, do mortify the desires of the flesh, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh. For they have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the bondage of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Abba, my Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. And if children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh, and joint heirs with the Messiah. If we suffer with him, we may be glorified together also. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. That was Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 18. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Sherry. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to, now I'm going to unmute our readers. You guys just stay unmuted. Okay, I'm going to call our first speaker. Uh, I'd like to call on, on Dr. Anthony Oliver. I'm going to have to unmute you. you I, oh, there you are. Hi, right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Uh, good uh, morning. And pleasure to be here. Uh, well, it's, it's a surprise, but I'm always thankful to be able to be a part of uh, what God was giving us in his last days by uh, giving the founder. the vision and revelation, which was all about his purpose and plan. And the way he always have communicated with a man in this, uh, earth, uh, earth plane that he, uh, created. Well, we come to, coming to realize that this creation, which Yahweh made through Yahshua Messiah, is temporary. And he's breaking that more clearly at the end of this age. The things that is being manifested is bringing everybody to a, a wanting to know their creator more, even though they don't accept him as he really is and actually exists. But it is bringing everybody to a, 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 a stream importance of um, what's going on around them. And we know this teaching is not of a man. 
and it's of a divine bit of revelation. And he chose by the foolishness of preaching the gospel, which is Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection, according to the scriptures. Uh, can we get uh, John 5.39, please? John 5 and 39. Sorry. Oh, sure. If you have it, go ahead and read it. Ye search the scriptures, for mm -hmm. in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Well, Messiah, when he walked around for the 33 and some odd years, um, the world look at that, what he was doing is setting up a way for them to do to be saved. But we come to find out from this teaching that what he was actually doing was fulfilling everything that was written in law and in the prophets. And his whole mission was to put an end to every physical way of worshiping. And, and when he nailed all that to the cross, it was finished in his sight and in Yahweh's sight. And this is what through the vision that we learn and give us the confidence that he is real and he fulfilled going back to Moses. And can we get Luke 24, 25? Luke 24 and 25. And he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to and to enter into his glory and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself and this is um this was after the death bear resurrection of god's messiah and this is when he appeared to uh, the two to two the two uh, men that was uh, mourning his death and he hid his identity from them but one of the reasons that they didn't recognize him because he did not raise a physical body. He raised a quickening spirit. And he called them old food, slow of heart, not to believe all that was spoken or written by Moses and the prophets. Because if they would have a believe what was written, they would knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was be rose, but rise again the third day. So he began back with Moses and he showed how Moses was born under the death decree. And Moses was, uh, was uh, Yahweh, uh, uh, Moses' mother had hid him for, uh, in a basket of bulrushes and Yahweh allowed uh, Pharaoh's daughter to rescue him. And he ended up uh, being raised with Pharaoh under Pharaoh's um, kingship. So Moses actually, he was a, a Hebrew, but he's raised an Egyptian. Um, so Moses, um, but he realized he was a Hebrew for one reason, he knew he was circumcision and, and, the, and, the, and the law of circumcision was only given to the Hebrews. So, Yah, so Moses, in his heart, he still loved his brethren, regardless of him being raised as an Egyptian. And one day when Moses was out, he seen an Egyptian smiting one of his uh, brethren. Mm -hmm. And Moses interceded and, and, and killed the Egyptian to save his brother's life. And I always looked at that as a murder, but that was not a murder. That was, mm -hmm. that was defending his brother. And uh, y'all would have to uh, make things more clearly to us as he revealed things more clearly to us. So Moses had to flee out of the land of Egypt. And one day while Moses was uh, uh, tending to his flock, he seen a phenomenal sight. He seen a bush burning, but the bush was not being consumed. And we come to find out according to this vision revelation that Moses was having a vision of revelation. If anyone was around at that time, 
they wouldn't have seen what Moses saw because Moses was seeing this in the confine of his heart and mind. And when Yahweh took on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim, it was for this one sole purpose so he could communicate with a man. He had to break himself down. And that, and that is going on today. When we understand anything about Yahweh's purpose, it's because it's Yahshua Messiah, Yahweh broke himself down in that shape and form so we can understand anything about him. So with Moses seeing this phenomenal sight in this, in, in this bush, Moses had a question. And the question was, what was his name? Because Moses was arose was was raised around the Egyptians, and they had a name for everything they worshipped was considered a god, and they worshipped it. And so Yahweh, so Moses had enough sense to say, "Well, I need to. I, can you give me your name? Because if you, because what it is, Yahweh had wanted commanded Moses to go back down to Egypt to deliver his 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 the." Children of Israel out of bondage. But it was my it was Yahweh's purpose that the children of Israel were going to bondage because it was it was, it went when Yahweh of Yahshua appeared to Abraham, he told him his seed was sojourn in the land and being bondage for some 400 to 430 years, and that he would surely deliver them. So this this all occurred according to Yahweh's purpose and plan. This is Everything that goes on is going according to his purpose of plan, even to his present time. And this is what Yahweh's mercy of willing, we 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 will come to realize that. And I'm just thankful that Yahweh. That might have mercy on my soul. At this uh, end of this age. But I thank you and all praises go to Yash Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Anthony. Our next speaker will be Dr. Tara Burley. Let me find you here. Hey, Tara, you're unmuted. Hi. Hello, everybody. Um, good morning. Good morning. It is an honor and it's a pleasure to still <clears throat> be able um, to just join together with everyone still in these times. And um, Yahweh is still providing for us. He still is Almighty Provider. And you know, we see this manifesting even throughout this um, pandemic. Yahweh is still having mercy upon us. And, you know, that lets us know that, you know, we are, we are in him. And um, I don't really have anything, you know, in particular. Um, it's so much that we have been given throughout these years. And I'm, it's, it's just just a, a blessing to be able to call upon the name Yahweh through Yahshua. And um, let's get uh, Ezekiel 36. And um, it's just, just coming to the realization that, you know, we have to come to the realization that Yahweh is going to get all the glory. He is the one that is doing all of this and is for his name's sake. <clears throat> it's not <clears throat> because that we are so special that, you know, he, you know, we're not getting any glory. We we have to give all the glory and all the praises unto his son, Yahshua, because it's for his name's sake that he wants his name to be glorified. And he wants his name to be declared through 
You cut off your volume. Something happened. Tara, we lost your sound. Okay, is that so? Someone logged in V50 Thin Q, and I don't know who that is. Could that be Tara? That's Tara, yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. Is that you, Tara? Yes. Okay. okay we got you. <laughs> I was like, who is this? I can see everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry for that uh, disconnection. <laughs> uh, um, let's continue. Let's uh, go to. Um, Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36 and 24, I think. Well, it's, it's where, where Yahweh is saying that he's declaring his name, of, that his name will be declared. I believe it's Ezekiel, let me see. 21, start at 21. Ezekiel 36 and 21. Mm -hmm. But I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whether, mm -hmm. they, whether they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith Yah Yahweh, mm -hmm. I do not this for your sakes, O house See, of Israel. I would say he does not do this for our sake. He does not do this for the house of Israel. He do it. He, keep going. But, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen. So he's doing this for his holy name's sake. And um, if we can go to, um, keep going there, keep going there. And I will sanctify my great name which was profaned among the heathen, which mm -hmm. ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith Yahweh of hosts. Go when and I shall, oh, go keep on, I'm sorry. When I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. So for I will, Yahweh is, is telling, is, 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 is showing that you know, we are his witnesses. We are, you know, ones who he's called out of the world who um, is, is declaring his name. And even still, you know, throughout what's going on, we are still preaching the gospel. We are declaring the name of Yahweh. Um, keep going. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries mm -hmm. and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. This, this is I, Yahweh. He, he's... Um, saying the same thing that you know jeremiah is for him, he is doing this for us and i just you know see that it's such a blessing that is not anything that we have done it's because yahweh's grace and his mercy that he is doing this and and you know we should be thankful because if it was up to us you know we would just be like the children of Israel, you know, it was nothing in them that could keep them, you know, from keeping Yahweh's law. Cause Yahweh said that it was, if you could keep this law, it'll be unto you, your righteousness. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't keep that law because they had nothing in them to keep it. So it is through Yahshua the Messiah and it's through the preaching of the gospel that we are able to, to do what the say of Yahweh, because before coming to class, we had nothing in us you know, nothing at all that had any resemblance of our creator. You know, we worship all type of things, just like, you know, the people now. And coming into this class and coming to a knowledge and an understanding of who our creator is, that is what is sustaining us. And that is what is still keeping us even together right now on this Zoom class you know it's something in us because if we didn't if if 
you know, Yahshua not be in us, we still wouldn't even still be seeking him through a Zoom class on a Sunday where we could be <laughs> sleeping in bed, you know? It's, it's something in us that just, just is, is drawing us to our creator. And I just, it's, it's so much that, you know, we can be thankful for even still in these times. And um, let's go uh, to um, Exodus where, you know, Yahweh is, is, is um, telling them, I think it's before he, um, when Moses gave him his name, he said that, that his name will be declared throughout all the earth. Like he's determined the end from the beginning. We, we know this that nothing's new up under the sun. So even in the beginning, Yahweh from, from jump is declaring his name would be declared throughout all the earth. And, you know, that is our job. You know, we are ambassadors of Yahweh. So we have to be the ones, you know, through the preaching of the gospel with Yahshua in us. It's not us doing it, but it's Yahshua in us that is allowing us to declare his name. And I think it's Exodus. Um, go ahead, Bree, I'm in class. Exodus is right before he let the children of Israel um, go. I think it is. Is it Exodus 3? If anybody have it. I think it's Exodus 9 and 16. That Because you said when he let them go, but here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exodus 9 and, and 16. Okay. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up. For to show in thee my power, mm -hmm. and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. And it's not um, any other name, like we say in the um, in the uh, moderation. There is no other name mm -hmm. that we can be saved in um, besides Yahshua Messiah. It's it's through Yahshua that we can be saved. And um, like I say, I don't really have anything in particular you know that you know i could say it's so much that i can say but it's just to encourage everybody i guess to continue to um you know hold each other arms up because right now i see this time as a reflection and yahweh like you know they always say every tub has to sit on his own bottom and right now, you know, if we've been sitting in class and we've been given so much, so right now is the time I see as Yahweh is, is showing us, like, do we really believe what, you know, he's been telling us all these years? Are we really, um, you know, standing for this gospel? Even not being able to go to class, are we still trying to seek him? Are we still looking, you know, keeping our finger in the book, are we still, you know, trying to, because he still, even, even now he still has given us so much information through the YouTube, through the transcripts, the Elohim books, you know, we have each other we can call on and still ask, like, are we still trying to seek him, you know, and um, right now it's just, I see it as a time as a reflection and, um, just reflect back on what everything we have been given and what Yahshua has been given us and to just hold on to it because, you know, we don't know exactly when um, Yahweh, we know that it is at the end, but we don't know exactly what hour and what date. So I only thing I can just, you know, encourage everybody is to do is just, you know, continue to hold each other's arms up, just like when Moses and Aaron and Ur, when they was fighting, you know, he had, you know, Aaron and Ur there holding up his arms, you know, declaring that name of Yahweh. And I see it as us, you know, doing the same thing for each other, you know, us holding each other's arms up. 
right now, you know, to fight the good fight and continue to declare that name and continue to be encouraged and have faith in Yahshua that regardless of whatever's going on, he's still going to take care of us even still. So, you know, that's really all I have to say. And I, I just still, I enjoy, you know, doing these Zoom classes because it throughout the week, it gives me, you know, courage and gives me enough strength to still get through, you know, all of this mess and all of this chaos. So I just want to thank everybody. And I'm thankful that Yahshua has given me brothers and sisters in Yahshua that continue to help me, you know, spiritually. So, so, um, that's, that's all I have to say and just praise Yahshua for everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Tara. Um, I'm going to call on our next speaker. Um, we'd like to have um, Dr. Lionel Van Manju. You're unmuted. There you go. Can you hear me okay? Thumbs up, Pam, if you can hear me all right. Hey, there you go. I'll try not to yell and shout it. It's a tremendous blessing to uh, uh, participate in such an event since there is uh, no class up the street here for me in Hamilton, uh, Canada, because older older uh, older members aren't leaving the house and want to be compliant and uh, all that stuff so anyway it's a, it's a pleasure uh, to have the opportunity to be here and see everyone's smiling face and and uh, even if I can't see your face it's not about the flesh by any means it's the spirit that's why we're here right and let's go to the first verse of the uh, of the scripture lesson please Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now we're not here by any means to look after and take care of any of the flesh. We are only here on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday when you guys have your class or any of these classes for the spirit. That's the only thing, the only reason we're here as much as some folks look great, and I miss your faces and so forth, but we're only here for the spirit. That's all of the purpose that we're here for. And every day we wake up, and every moment of the day we breathe, we breathe in Yahweh's precious name, and that is what carries us and buoys us and able to live physically and even more so spiritually. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's tough not being able to see people from a physical standpoint or connect with people or see a smile or a hug. It's tough because this weekend here uh, we would have been in, many of us would have been in Chicago and and uh, or if those that couldn't go there you'd be sitting in the in the Tampa class and at the end of class you give each other some hugs and you know you can't do that anymore and yet we lift each other's arms up in the spirit that's what it's all about so you know we're always not taking out this creation with a COVID-19 virus a lot of people will unfortunately pass on as a result but yeah always a consuming fire and he's going to take it out his way but this serves as a warning to all of us, right? You know, what are we doing? What are we focused on? A uh, chance to reflect as the previous speaker spoke about, the Yahweh's purpose is, uh, is uh, Tony or Anthony was speaking about the fulfillment. And, and Tara was talking about the strength and reflecting and looking at the materials we have and be so exceedingly grateful. So let's do this. Let's go over to Deuteronomy 4, please. It's a different format because you can't really hear people, you know, or get the feel of the, <laughs> the, the brethren sitting there at the same time. It's kind of like having a, a conversation with, with, with your family and you have a chance to share things you come to know and be grateful for that. So uh, Deuteronomy 4 and let's uh, start at 7. Deuteronomy 4 and 7. For what nation is there so great? who had an Elohim so high, so nigh unto them. As Yahweh our Elohim in all things or we called upon him for. Yeah, now Yahweh said, Yahweh brought these people up. He raised them, you know, for his namesake, as the previous speaker was talking about in Exodus 9 there, right? For this very sake, as you, for this deed, as he caused them to come on out of Egypt, for, the, for, for his name will should go out to all ends of the earth. And here he is, he set them up in Deuteronomy, he's the second reading of the law, and he's going about, you know, Moses is going about recanting and sharing the law a second time with the children, because Yahweh yeah, just doesn't do things with one reflection, he does it, he repeats and repeats and repeats, and you see it in the earth plane, you see it in the, in the book, you see it in, in life, you see it over and over again. 
Okay, but read on, please. Seven. For what? For I'm sorry. Eight. eight. Thank you. For what nation is there so great that had statues and judgments so righteous as all the all this law which I set before you this day? You know, these statutes and judgments, it's not something that their, their high priests or chief counsel or elders got together and wrote and came up with their own edicts. Those things they received from Yahweh Elohim uh, coming up, you know, as dictated from the mountain to Moses and share with the people and all those things they said they would do, right? You know, that Yahweh set those things up. And with those judgments and ways, it was providing them a way of escape, setting the stage for Yahshua the Messiah to take those sins away, right? Blotting out those ordinances. You got to have the ordinances established and so forth, but then have them taken away. Because I remember as a kid going to class, I always re would reflect and remember, you know, the physical points to the spiritual. And you have to have the physical representation and understand anything of the spirit. Okay, but read on, please. I only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently. Now, see, Let now take heed your, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. But keep, but take heed to yourself and keep thy soul diligently. Well, now why would that matter? Well, you have a soul, and your soul can be lost. Now, all souls are Elohim's, but he, but you can lose your soul. Now, take it, pay attention to these things. Is what he's telling the people that you know, you know, through Yahweh speaking through Moses here, he's saying, "Listen, take heed to thyself, and that, that keep thy soul diligently." Read on. Lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. See, unless, unless you forget they... those things that they had seen. Now, he brought them out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and they grumbled, and they had the, some of the plagues were, were poured out on them and the Egyptians, but others were not. They had experienced the death angel where they had to be in the house, the blood and the four points to the door, and have the lamb with no spot and blemish, and eat the lamb in haste, so, you know, and, and be ready to go, you know, but not, don't go out of the door too early. you got to go right on time, right, and be prepared. And when they left out of there, I could experience all of those signs and wonders and miracles and plagues and so forth. They got to the Red Sea and they were murmuring and grumbling, what Moses, weren't there enough graves in Egypt? And yet he'd already worked with them tremendously beforehand. You know, it, it, this is a reminder to them and also to us now in this day, not to forget the things we've seen and heard. As the previous festivals were talking about, you know, we've got a tremendous amount of information, material, and, and, and righteousness before us in terms of being able to look after each ourselves and and well not of ourselves but but to look after us to take care of her to take care as best we can in the spirit okay to pay attention to things we've seen and heard because these things repeat over and over again he told the the the, the apostles there you know hey listen you can be scattered all over the place and here we were scattered you know we've got some green bay on the on the class here which is great and so folks you guys are all over the the Tampa, St. Pete's area, maybe there's some other visitors from other places were scattered. You know, we want to be together, and the only way we can be together is in the spirit. But in the, the, you know, and we're going to hang on to that as much as we can and as, as preciously as we can. But read on, please. Unless they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life, but teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. Yeah, let's remember these things and, and teach them to our sons' sons. As growing up in this school as a little kid, you know, and having young people speak, various people speak, it's important to teach it to, to, to learn and experientially teach what you've received, right? And, you know, there's some school teachers on this class here, and every so often they call a student up in front of the class, not really to teach the class necessarily, but to demonstrate what they've come to know about the lesson plan. And that's, a, that's part of their examination process, whether it's written or in a presentation format and here we are we're being tested we're being tested of what we're made of what spirit resides in us and hey i tell you i had lots of tears this weekend you know and because i'm not where i want to be and it's not about a physical geographic place necessarily but i want to be in the spirit all the time and i and i can't be and I, we're in the flesh and we have to be challenged and endure that through yashua's mighty hand he's got us and move us move us on forward the less these things depart from your heart, teach your sons and your sons' sons. Read on verse 10. Especially the day that thou shouldest before Yahweh thy Elohim and Horeb, when Yahweh said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words. See, they and don't they... choose to hear his words. He's going to make them hear their words. You know, it's not up to you or anything. He's going to make you hear those words. 
you know, he cause, he gives you the heart to have a heart and the ears to hear and the eyes to see. He gives you all of that. And he's going to make you hear because his word will go forth and won't return to him void. That's what he did with the Ash of the Messiah, his example, and all three, you know, as an author finisher. The word of the hour will go forth and will not return him void. He's going to bring back those sons back unto him and reconcile back into the body of the Ash of the Messiah, as you read later on in Ephesians, the beginning of Ephesians there. Okay, but gather together and be focused, you know, uh, but read on. Uh, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth and that they shall they may teach their children that's right teach the children make sure they know and understand and so forth and make sure as you teach your children that you also understand you know what it is you've come to see okay read on and ye came near and stood under the mountain and the mountain burned with fire unto the mist of heaven with darkness, clouds, and thick dark, darkness. Yeah. And Yahweh spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. See, and that's important when you go back to no similitude. There's nothing you can fashion your eyes upon and say, oh, well, I saw a stupendous this or stupendous that or whatever else. It's, there's, you saw nothing. But you heard the voice, and now we made you hear the voice, you know, and we turn aside, you know, like we came in these schools, I remember as a, as a kid listening, we came DOA, dead on arrival, through the doors of the class or, or into the gospel, and there's nothing that was anything really desirable about any of us, you know, but we came in these class dead, and we had the opportunity through life through the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah, as all part of Yahweh's purpose and plan. He's speaking to them, and they only, they only heard the voice. On the other side of the page, verse 24, please. 4 and 24. What are we doing? Uh, sorry, Deuteronomy 4 and 24, please. Oh. 4 and 24. For Yahweh thy Elohim is a consuming fire, even a jealous owl. He was a consuming fire and a jealous owl. He was a fire that went before them and protected them. When you when you look down at what they what they, when they came on out of when they came on out, out of uh, out of Egypt there and um, you know uh, there, we go. there we go when they came on out of Egypt here you know you know they came down out of, out of Egypt here and so forth there's the, the cloud and a pillar of fire and they looked after them and you know it kept them warm at night and, and protected them in the daytime and so forth the great the great pillar of fire he's a consuming he's a he's a jealous owl and you know and when his name goes forth there is is when the previous speaker talked about you know the name forth went out forth into the world yeah he's going to be consuming those that aren't going to accept and aren't going to give him the glory he's always going to get the glory but you don't want to be given the glory when it's too late you know every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess and talk about it. Peter, uh, i couldn't hear you i'm sorry uh, second peter chapter three Second Peter three and one. Uh, let's start at uh, verse nine, please. Thank you. Second Peter three and nine. Did you want maybe eight? Sure. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. See, we think our lives are so mighty, and the time we've got to. <laughs> Uh, on our bodies in time, but man, we're just just a speck of time, and this helps set up prophetic time or to understand how the other works out on dispensations and so forth. Like when you see that sign on the Moses chart there, you know, it's coming in on what the fourth day, right? Right there, and it's that sun is pointing to pointing at Yahshua the Messiah. There he is, right? You know, coming on out of the grave, and those sons uh, that was that slept in the earth because they believe their first report are coming on up it as well, right? So, you know, helps you understand time, okay? But read on. Yahweh is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, yep. not willing that any should perish. That's right. You know, now let's, let's hold that for a second. 
Um, let's go to Isaiah. Into Isaiah, I think somewhere in the 40s, where, where Yahweh Yahweh punishes and so forth. Um, hmm. I'm just, just looking at it. Um, uh, yeah, 42. Isaiah 40, what is it? Uh, yeah, no, let's not do that. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 43 and 25, please. Isaiah 43 and 25. I even I am he that blotted out the transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. See, now that's part of the promise being made. He's not going to remember your sins. He's not doing that through Moses back there. Moses isn't your intercessor, although he's a type and shadow of that. It's it's Joshua that is going to want to be the one down the road. So written all beforehand. So when Joshua comes on the scene, he says, "Listen, I love. I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me, right?" And you read through Luke 24 as well when he's walking the road to Emmaus with the two that uh, you know were were talking about the. The death, burial, and resurrection, Yahshua the Messiah, and so forth. And he said to them, weren't these things supposed to happen? Right? He's telling you. He's the one that brought us up those transgressions. Read on. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare, un, declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Yeah. So he's the one that's made made these promises and so forth he's not slack concerning so yeah we promise he's he's long suffering to us ward and he's going to do his will right let's go back into second peter there and uh carry on with that verse um, pick it back up at nine though yahweh yes. is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish but that all should come to Hope someone's okay there um but yeah he, he's not willing not willing that any should perish but all should come to repentance now in john 14 this he always the spirit of truth and there's some some are not going to repent right mm -hmm. he doesn't doesn't desire that you know that all should perish but at the end of the day there's that that spirit of, of wickedness out there the mystery of iniquity that some are not going to repent some are not going to recognize yahweh and they're not going to recognize the son yashua messiah savior Okay, but read on. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night. See, in now the, the, day, the day of Yahweh, the, the end of this age, the consummation, it comes as a thief in the night. Now, this, the one thing that I reflect on with regards to this, uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19 or this current state and so forth, countries over here in North America, you saw this, you should have saw this coming. You know, when you, when you saw a couple, you know, the lockdown of Wuhan, who locks down a city? That's that's it's almost unbelievable. It's one thing if, if a city is locked down because it's uh, it's going through a siege or something like that, trying to conquer a city, like uh, happened in the Civil War of Vicksburg or um, you know Stalingrad and so forth, or places like that where a city is besieged, or other places in the Bible and so forth. But um, but, it, but yeah, you can see this virus coming and creeping and. and here in Canada, it's here as well, and you watch it creep over in British Columbia and a little bit in Toronto and grow and grow and grow and move along. You can't see it, but you can see the numbers be made manifest. A little bit here and here, a little and there, a little. It's not a respect for persons. Leaders have it, celebrities have it, musicians have it, ordinary Joe Schmo in the park has it, you know, but you don't know who really has it, although until the signs are be made manifest. But you see it coming slowly, and it's a sign for us that when you look at were we really prepared for this virus to come in terms of having masks ready and gowns and gloves ready? It's not from a political standpoint, but from a standpoint of society, were we really prepared? No, I don't. I don't think so. Anyway, because you know, all kinds of companies are trying to make ventilators, make masks, and people are selling masks at their home. Well, if you would have known before, the company could have ramped up production even more. For example, in terms of the, this is a type and shadow for us to make sure. Hey. 
see this thing coming. What are you doing? Here we're at this end of this age. You've heard about it ever since I was a little kid coming to class. We're at the end of the age. We're almost there. We're almost there. And I, it's not that I don't believe it. I know that we're right on the edge of the age. And at the same time, as we are on the edge of the age, it's even more so to hang on and stand fast in things that know and understood, right? That are that we're not deceived. That we can check out the things that we know. We know with the surety of where it came from. And it's the spirit of, of Yahshua that needs to be made manifest in ourselves. That day of Yahweh shall come as a thief in the night. This is just a foreshadow mm -hmm. and important for us to pay attention. You know? Mm -hmm. But the day of Yahweh will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. To be burned up. Now back in Deuteronomy, it said that Yahweh Elohim is a consuming fire, right? That's that's what he is. He's, you know, when the when they took out no, the back there with Noah, right, with the flood, he said, "Listen, I'm going to give you that rainbow sign, and that rainbow is going to tell you I'm not going to take out the world with water anymore." It doesn't mean that people aren't going to die from water because every so often there's floods and tsunamis and so forth, but he's not taking out the creation with 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 a flood anymore. Okay, now he's a consuming fire, and he's going to take it out with heat and fervent heat and so forth, and he's going to do his will. And you think back to those boys back with Nebuchadnezzar, where they were thrown in the fire that was seven times hotter. And they came on out of the fire, you know, the three of them were thrown in the fire, and they come on out, and, and they look in the fire, and there's a fourth in there. You know, they're clothed in the sun, and they come on out, and they weren't smelling like fire at all. They were just one, you know, and that's what we're supposed to be. One with Yahweh through Yahshua the Messiah. You know, fitly framed together. Mm -hmm. Come on, please. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conduct and righteousness? Yep. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh. Yep. We're in let's, the heavens. Let's, sorry, let's jump, to, let's, let's, let's jump to Amos 5 and 18 for a second, and we'll come back here in the first <laughs> Go ahead and read it. Okay. Amos. 5 and 18, please. And, okay. Sorry here. Amos is one of those hard to find ones. I know. <laughs> keeping, keeping you on your toes on a Sunday morning. Yes, Amos 5 and? 18, please. 18. 18. Sorry. 18. Okay. <laughs> Woe unto you that desire the day of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? The day of Yahweh is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from the lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of Yahweh be darkness and not light? Even very dark. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to be found in. You don't want to be found in darkness. We're, we're supposed to be children of the light, right? And uh, you know, it's desiring the day of the hour. Be careful because uh, you know we all think we're ready, but when push comes to shove, we may not be ready, right? And and that's why it's important to assemble ourselves together, whether it's this format or on the phone with one of our brethren or in person in groups of two or three, six feet apart, or whatever it is. It's important to make sure. You know, we think we're ready. We, you know, we're, we, what manner of holy conduct and righteousness we have? Well, if we we don't do a very good job of assessing ourselves anyway, right? You know, we all think we got it all figured out, and lo and behold, we come up short. You know, people losing jobs and it's horrible and so forth. And you think back, well, do we have enough money stocked away? No, we don't. You know, although those are temporal things, but there's there are examples. Okay, but let's carry on. Uh, let's go jump down to. Um, Verse 14, please. Amos? Or, uh, sorry, or, uh, Second Peter 3 and 14. Peter my 14, okay. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent, that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. He's the one that's going to clean us up, right? We, we, as much as we, you know, we think, I, I think I've got no blame or whatever else, or I'm spotless. No, 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 no. Not at all. I, I, you know, just like Saul, we all die daily, and we all, what wretched man we are, or what, you know, we all have a work to do, and, and, and to, to 
reconcile out the things we've done wrong and be the try and be the best we can, but always focus on the spirit. I'll jump over to Second Peter verse uh, chapter two and verse nine, and then I'll uh, yeah, yield the floor to some other wonderful folks I want to listen to and, uh, and uh, be a student. Please. Second Peter two and nine. Yahweh knoweth how to deliver the righteous out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Yeah, Can we read on a little bit further. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. dignity. See, just like the scripture lesson talked about, you know, about, you know, not walking after the flesh. And as much as we're in the flesh, we have to do as much as we can to not think think in the ways of the flesh. Anyway, but yeah, we know how to deliver the righteousness out of this temptation or a challenge or out of any problems and so forth. Always look to him. Gosh, mm -hmm. so anyway, thank you very much. I love you guys and uh, look forward to next week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lionel. Thank you, Lionel. Our next speaker, I'd like to call Dr. Charles Marshall. Hello. 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 Well, as it has been stated before, we are in perilous times, but we have been accused of preaching gloom and doom in the past. And you know something? Mm -hmm. I am not hearing gloom and doom right now even though we are in such perilous times. We are preaching, and I'm hearing preacher, people preaching, uh, you know, to hang in here, that this isn't gloom, this isn't doom. And we're sitting back and we're watching Yahweh work his plan and purpose. We're preaching hope. We have a hope right now of eternal life. We have a hope right now of sitting back and watching Yahweh's plan and purpose. Before, it was pretty easy to sit back and watch it because we were all doing pretty good. Some people had health problems and this and that, but right now we're seeing some something that is affecting the whole earth plane. And it reminds me, and like Tara got into, back in, uh, Tara got, in, uh, got back into in, in Egypt there. And what we're seeing is the way I'm seeing this whole thing is you go down into Egypt there. Okay, let me get the pointer here. Let's see, I think I can do it by going up here someplace. I did it before. Oh, well, I don't need no pointer. But anyhow, down in Egypt, okay, I'm, I'm looking at this like the death of the firstborn. There's a death decree out here in the land right now. And what Yahweh told the children of Israel to do was to go into their homes, into their own homes. Mm -hmm. And they were to take and they were to put that blood on their doorpost, on the inside, on their doorpost, the four points of blood, you see, and the death angel would pass over. And the way I'm looking at this whole thing right now, that's what's going on. We are basically being told to stay home. And we here in this gospel, thanks to Yahweh in these times, has given us, he, he has shed his blood for us, and we have him, we have that lamb within us. We are eating that Passover supper. When we come down to these classes, we've been eating this Passover supper for years. <clears throat> the, the, the last supper was not the first Passover that Yahweh, that Yahshua ever ate. That's just that the one that the world commemorates was the last one that he ate from a physical standpoint. But he ate Passovers all the way down through. And we've been coming to class eating this Passover, some of us for years, some of us a shorter time. It doesn't matter. We're all eating that Passover and we're getting that lamb inside us. And I don't see people in class getting panicky. I don't see people in class uh, gloom and doom. I see people having uh, a spirit about them that we will overcome and that Yahweh will take care of us. We do have that belief and I'm seeing that being manifested, which is uh, extremely encouraging. And so what we're doing is 
Now, I don't know when this thing's going out. I'm not trying to say that Yahweh's going to take this out with, he's not going to, like, like uh, Lionel said, he's not going to take this out with a plague. There is no way, you understand. And the children of Israel, that last plague, after that, then they had a three-day journey to the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And then at the Red Sea, yes, and now we want to take lessons from what's going on back there in Egypt. The children of Israel were fighting all the way. They had doubt all the way. But see, see, this is a different age and this is a dip different dispensation. And now we have Yahshua in us. We have that hope of glory in us. They did not have that back then. You know, see, they were, fo they were following what they thought was Moses. Moses was just the front guy, kind of like Dr. Kinley is just the front guy, you see. But it was actually Yahshua or Yehoshua back there, as the world calls Joshua, back there with them. He was the Holy Spirit. He was Yahweh in that physical body, and he was leading them. But they were looking at the man, you see. And a lot of people today are looking at men. And a lot of people in this institute look at men, but it's Yahweh that's doing it. He's leading us to the Red Sea. Whenever they got their backs against the wall of the Red Sea, the children of Israel murmured. You see, they did not have that Holy Spirit in them. We do. I'm not hearing the murmuring. And it is so uplifting to me to see and to understand that. Now, we've got to go through the parted waters, the Red Sea, three-day journey, then a three-day cleaning up. Now, I don't know how to correlate all these three days and all of this because uh, Yahweh hasn't let me in on all that. And probably he will some people as this thing goes on. We've got a three days to clean up at the, well, we've already been cleaned. We've got that spirit within us. And we're, we've been listening to Yahweh speaking to us from that mountain back right down here, you see. Then they, the children of Israel wandered for 40 years into the wilderness. Now we've got threes, we've got forties. Like I say, I, I haven't come up with anything on all this yet, but all of this is significant, okay? And we've even said how that, we've, that, that uh, Yahweh took us out of Egypt and has brought us into the wilderness, you see? And some have received their inheritance on this side and some will, are still going to receive their inheritance. These are the things we've got to look at. Now, I haven't got all the answers. I haven't got all that, you see. But now in the scripture reading, okay, we'll go to the scripture reading, um, the eighth chapter of, of Romans, okay. Well, would you read uh, one of you, uh, please uh, start there? Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And that's what we're doing now, is we're walking after the spirit, not after the flesh. We're existing in this flesh. We're having to do the things in this flesh. We're having to take, observe some of the things, some of the limitations that we can do in the flesh, right? But we're, excuse me, we're not, we're, we're not walking after the flesh. We're looking at the spirit. We're looking at what Yahweh is doing. Yahweh protected the children of Israel back there, and he's protecting us today. There is absolutely, positively no doubt in my mind that he's protecting us. I'm not saying that maybe somebody in this, in this, in this class may not, well, well, may not die from this, but I'm going to tell you, if they do, I think they're going to be ready, and I think they're going to understand what's going on because he has given us so much. Read more, please. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah had made me free from the law of sin and death. See, he's made us free. He's made us free from this doubt. He's made us free from this worry. He's made us free from the law of sin and death. You see, these people out here, I, when I talk to these people out here, a lot of them are scared. And a lot of them are very, very scared. And they have a reason and a right to be scared, you see. But we have that, we have the, the Holy Spirit in you is righteousness. Okay, cool. But boy, peace and joy. Right now, you see, we have peace and we have joy. And that's what these classes are for, is to help us, to bring us up, 
just like Moses when he was on uh, on the mountain there, and he had the law and the prophet on each side of him, lifting his arms. That's what these classes are. These classes, yeah, isn't it amazing? A few years ago, we didn't have none of this technology. This wasn't available. Now then we're coming down to these times, and guess what? We have this technology available. Or even though we cannot meet on a physical basis, we can still meet you know, through technology. This is all, the timing is all, it's just so neat and it's just so cool to see how Yahweh is working. This is in my mind, this is the way I'm seeing it and this is what I see. Okay, read. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, See, Yahweh this, this law out here, if we're trying to observe all this stuff, you see, it, it's weak. The peop, people did not get any, any faith through that law. And these churches out here, you know, they're not going to get any faith. They're questioning right now the biggest question with Christianity uh, and a lot of these other religions are, why is God allowing this to happen? Well, I'm telling you why Yahweh is allowing this to happen. It's because of your unrighteousness, because of your unwilling, when you hear the truth, that the name of Yahweh, that is his name, it is important to him. He shows you through the law. He shows you through the prophets. He shows you through the physical creation how important your name is. But then you turn around and say, ah, it don't matter what we call him. And you're wondering why he is pouring out plagues on the earth plane, just like back there with the children of Israel. When they were disobedient, you understand, he poured out plagues. Now, there were righteous people back there when he poured out those plagues, and he protected those people, and he helped those people. You understand? And that's what he's doing today. That's what he's doing now. He's pouring out a plague on this earth plane, but he's protecting me. He's protecting you. He's protecting us. We've got to understand this and we've got to realize it. We've got to hold each other's arms up, you see? And it just, it just caught me the other day that, you know, that we, we were accused of preaching gloom and doom. Well, here is gloom and doom all around us and we're not preaching gloom and doom. We're preaching hope. We're preaching righteousness. And we're trying to get people to understand you see, the power of Yahweh and what Yahweh is doing and what Yahweh is trying to show the world. Now, I know the world ain't going to repent. I know the world ain't. It, it, it's not in the book. If it was in the book, I would have hope, but it's not in the book. But this here, what is happening is for us, for us to see, for us to learn, for us to have faith, to build our faith upon. We can't do it on the world. You look at the leaders of the world, all the leaders of the world right now, are completely confused. They don't know which end is up, you see. There's even some leaders that are taking advantage of this whole situation and grabbing more power. And I'm not talking about our president, I'm talking about in the world, although I'm not gonna get into what's going. We don't have to, because we're not concerned with that. You see, we're concerned with what Yahweh is doing and what he's showing us. Okay, could you read some more, please? For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh because of sin to condemn sin in the flesh. And that's what he's doing right now. He is condemning sin. He is condemning this unrighteousness in the flesh out there right now. He's trying to get the world to see. I, I, hope, I hope that somebody will see these uh, podcasts I hope that people will see a lot of the classes now are going to these uh, video things and a lot of them have went to uh, YouTube and stuff before. And I'm hoping that some people in the world will see this and see that through the preaching of the gospel and the preaching of the hope with what's going on in the earth plane right now, that some of them will return. And hopefully some people that are in class, sitting in class for years, you see, and have been kind of, uh, uh, will finally say, okay, I see, I see what this is about, you see, and the Holy Spirit can take and spark them and give them a new uh, outlook on life, you see, and then hopefully some of the people that have turned away from this gospel, that this will be, you know, they will quit their backsliding, if you will, and that they will, they will turn around and see the power 
and the righteousness and the peace and the joy that he can give us in the spirit. You see, even though all around us is chaos and all around us is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a plague. Now, whether it's the 10th plague or not, I'll let people work that out. But I'm just looking at it that this is the death plague. And that we, because we have that blood on our doorpost, us, okay, on this building, and we have eaten that lamb, we are cons and we are consuming that lamb, you see, that we not will be protected. I'm just going to say it like this. We are protected. And with that, I'll turn it over to another speaker, and uh, thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Chuck. Um, next speaker I'd like to call on, Dr. Karen Martin. Sorry about that. Okay, you should be unmuted now. Good morning, brethren. It's afternoon. Okay. It's always been a privilege or pleasure to um, testify of anything that we have learned in the school. And um, we are actually rejoicing. And um, it, it can be felt, it can be felt, it can be seen. Because um, Yahweh has a purpose, and right within his purpose, he has been using us or manifesting through us for this gospel to go out throughout the world. And um, listening um, to the previous speaker, you know, you can just feel that connection. You can just feel that joy. And um, I am so happy. I'm so happy that I am a part of that. And I have um, some scriptures. Because you see, Israel was a pe peculiar group of people. Yahweh chose them. And he had said that over and over. And although they were disobedient, although they were disobedient, he, um, he loved them. He chastised them. He whipped them. He loved them. Some of them were cut off. But he did say that they were a peculiar set of people. Now, um, peculiar means special. And remember now, it says, one is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, but salvation is of the Hebrew, which is of the Israelites. So spiritually, no, we are all Israelites, or all the children of Yahweh, or the son of Yahweh. Because that's when Yahshua came in, he brought on the middle wall of partition. So we are neither Jew nor Gentile, born nor free. And so on, male nor female. Now, um, if the scripture reader get me Exodus, um, I want Exodus 19 and verse 5. And the other scripture would be um, Deuteronomy 26 and verse 18. Because we are indeed a... Um, an, there's nothing, it's not because of our natural life or what we did for us to be um, special, but because Yahweh has chosen us. He chose Israel and we are Israel today, spiritually speaking, because once you accept Yahshua the Messiah, that makes you an Israelite, a true Israelite. You have those two scriptures? Exodus 19 and 5. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Right. And that's what Yahweh told the children of Israel, that if they obey his voice and be obedient to his commandment, they will be a peculiar treasure above all the people. Now, we know that we cannot do this without the Holy Spirit. He has to cause us to do that. Do you see yourself now in the state that you are being a peculiar or a special people? Yes. Because even after the lockdown, we did not miss a class. You notice the class was set up the lockdown the class was set up that everyone can view on, on Zoom. Yahweh is always making provision. Deuteronomy 14 and verse 2. 
You want Deuteronomy 14 and 2? Yes. And then the other scripture would be 1 Peter 2 and verse 9. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art an holy people unto Yahweh thy Elohim. And Yahweh had chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the earth. See how many times he said that? And look at when um, Pete, in Peter, this is after Yahshua's death, burial, and resurrection. First Peter 2 and 9. What did, um, what, did it, what did it say here? He has not changed. He's Yahweh yesterday, today, and forever. He said, I am Yahweh. I change not. And this is after the death and burial and resurrection of Yahshua when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the day of Pentecost. In First Peter 2 and 9, what, um, what did, does that one say? First Peter 2 and 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, mm -hmm. that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Right. So Yahweh chose us as a peculiar people, and for that we have to be eternally grateful. We So we cannot do nothing other than what? Yahweh has ordained us to do, to go forth and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. So when you look at, um, when you look at um, the, I'll just, um, I'm just going to go back um, in Exodus in Egypt a little, where because that's exactly what the earth plane is playing out now. And we have been, he says, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it until he comes who right it is. So we have seen where Yahweh's purpose has been just overturning and we cannot overemphasize enough going back to Egypt. So here, after Moses, and I'm just going to pick up where Anthony left off, after Moses um, killed that Egyptian, he defended his brother. He killed the Egyptian, buried him in the sand, testified to the death. Of Yahshua the Messiah buried him in the sand, testifying to the burial. Moses went in the second day. You know, it says this thing was known to Pharaoh that he had killed um, his, his slave master. So what he did, he said the third day, early the third day, Moses ran away into the wilderness where he um, his life was spared because he had to run away from Pharaoh. So that's a death, that's a burial. And that's a resurrection. So he was over here now in the wilderness. Yahweh gave Moses his name. He gave him the gospel. So he gave him his name as Yahweh. He gave him the gospel when he said to him, um, what is that? He said to him, put your hand in your bosom. That's in, his hand became leprosy. That's death. It was buried in his bosom. That's burial when he took it out the second time, it was resurrected. So he gave him the name, he gave him the gospel, and he gave him his characteristic also to show that Aya, Asha Aya, when he cast the rod on the ground and the rod became a serpent, then he told Moses to take the rod by the tail. And in the school, we have come to learn that taking the rod by the tail, you know, the split point, words, you see, words in our vocab vocabulary, we will think that, Oh, yes, man made them up. But yes, man made them up. But who is in man that's giving man that wisdom? Because remember, Yahweh's divine attribute, one of them is wisdom. So that wisdom that was placed in man, you have play on word, poon. So you have tail and you have tail, T-A-I-L, and you have T-A-L-E. But you take it, the serpent, by the T-A-L-E. That's the lie. This is why we of the Institute can take the serpent by the tail without that serpent harming us because what we know who that serpent is so he gave him his characteristic and he said go down into egypt and because i'm going to send you to pharaoh to deliver the children of israel out of egypt now yahweh told them that listen moses i am going to harden pharaoh's heart and we have seen so many times each time that pharaoh go in unto the children unto um 
Each time Moses go in onto Pharaoh, Pharaoh would ease up and said, okay, I'm going to let them go. And every time Moses go in onto him, he would say that, but he kept lying. That's what he kept doing. Because you know why he had to lie? Because he is of his father, the devil. The lust of his father he will do. He said he was a liar from the beginning and a murderer, and there is no truth that is in him. So Pharaoh just kept lying. But what happened? Yahweh devastated Egypt with ten plagues. He told them, put the blood. He said to the children of Israel, put the blood on the inside of the doorpost. Remember, he didn't see on the outside. And now we see all of this playing out. You, you just have to look back and, and just give the glory to Yahshua. Because now we realize that blood has to be on our inside. Even with them telling us, no, the law of the land. Because remember, our founder said we should obey the law of the land. They said stay indoors. Stay indoors. But is it real? Look on the indoors or the inside. That blood has to be on your inside. That is what is going to sustain you. The preaching of the gospel that we had over the years, that's what's going to sustain us. We are not shaken. We are not moved by what is happening. We are just sitting back and riding along the purpose of Yahweh. Um, I was listening to um, the, the, on the conference call when Dr. Dennis Allen from the Orlando branch, and he said, boy, sometimes you want to sit back and say, get them, Yahweh, get them, because, you know, it's like you've been preaching all this time, you've been preaching your soul out, and people would reject it, and you're saying, Yahweh, prove to them that you're real, prove to them, but it's like you don't even have to say that anymore, because it is just manifesting and just happening, right? Now, after the by the death of the Lamb, the Lamb was buried in them, that's a Passover, and you see, that's exactly what we are right on time because today is what the fifth we have nine days from now april 14th would have been the passover and you know there are going to be some um differences between a day or a song because of the gregorian calendar and the hebrew calendar but by principle so april 14 would have been the passover what was on the menu roasted lamb unleavened bread bitter herbs no what are they eating out there in the world? They're giving you grape juice and crackers. That's where we caught the serpent by the tail again, because that's a lie that has been told. And what they were to eat it in their house. It said, if your household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor take it according to the number of souls. Do you see us now on our inside, indoor, partaking of that lamb? Yes. Some, I notice, if you notice what happened, you don't see Chuck and Jennifer in two separate places. They are right in their household together. They use one connection in order to log in onto the Zoom. Pam and, 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 um, Pam and Joe, they are together, but just because, I know just because of the sound and the vibration, they have to be in separate rooms. But really, the whole principle of that is they are on the inside, they are partaking of that lamb. So we are seeing that manifesting with us. And it's just beautiful when you see that happen. Now, it says, the death angel is going to pass over. And brethren, we see that death angel being passed over. Because when you look at how the world is in turmoil, they are calling for prayers. And we of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research is one, is the only one that is not offering a prayer to say, Yahweh, take away this plague, take away this plague, because we know it must happen. The death angel will pass over once you are being obedient to Yahshua the Messiah. Now, after the children of Israel had the Passover, what happened? They went through the divided waters of the Red Sea. And what? Pharaoh and his host was bust asunder in the lake. It says, Yahweh, Colossians 1 and verse 26 says, the, the mystery which has been, it says, when Yahshua the Messiah, that's Second Thessalonians 5 and 7, unto you who are troubled, rest with us. When Yahshua the Messiah shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance and them that know not Yahweh, nor obey not the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. So we see Pharaoh was not being obedient back here. 
And what happened? Sarah and his host was burst asunder in, in, in the lake of fire, in, in the Red Sea, which was like unto a lake, because red would be represented like the fire. The sea is water or a lake. So he was burst asunder in the lake of fire. The same principle that's happening here. It's nothing new because Yahweh Elohim is a consuming fire. This is why the angel Gabriel, the angel Michael that was at the door in the garden, he had a flaming sword in his hand. It's the flaming sword. Flaming is like fire. Yahweh Elohim is a consuming fire. Just as how we have the chart, it says the orange fire cloud represents Yahweh. So it's nothing new when we when it has been prophesied or we were told that Yahweh will consume this earth with fire. When Yahshua the Messiah was buried in 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 the in Joseph's new tomb, when they went there, they saw only the garments that he had. And people had a problem, oh, that can't be, the body should be there. But they don't understand that Yahweh Elohim is a consuming fire. And that's how he is going to consume this creation. And as the founder said, he will not do it without us. Because we will be in him. And that glory and that light, that fire is going to consume all the negative energy that there is. Now, get me, jump back to um, the scripture lesson, which is Romans 8 and verse 1. Romans 8 and 1. Mm -hmm. there, is the, there is, therefore now, no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, and it says there is therefore no. No means presently. No condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. How many of us are here now making preparation for the flesh? We have to live. We have to survive. But is that our utmost priority? No. It has never been. Once you come to the understanding of Yahweh, we come to understand that the natural, in this natural, you will never have peace. Raise your hand. How in, and I mean, I don't literally mean to raise your hand, but how many of us have ever had peace in this natural? I've examined that. If you have a moment of peace, it's always short-lived. Because it says what the creature was made subject to vanity, but we were made subject in vanity with our hope. Because it says if, on, if in this life only we have hope in Yahshua, we would be men most miserable. So in this natural, it has never it has never designed for us to live comfortably and have peace. There's always something sticking us, and then we have to turn to Yahshua for that comfort and that that peace. And that is always within. So he said, who want not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Read. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah had made me free from the law of sin and death. And it says the law of Yahshua has made us free from the law of sin. And that Paul had made that statement. Because Paul was referring to the carnal ordinances that was given to the children of Israel. But remember, those ordinances was also imposed upon us because we didn't know better and we also accepted them. And it says we were a what? A law unto ourselves. Now that we come to understand this, it has also made us free. Although it wasn't given to us in the first place, it was imposed on us. We were burdened with it. Now you understand you're being made free. You don't, you're you not under the law anymore. Read. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, Yahshua, Yahweh sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, because sin, because of sin, to condemn sin in the world and the flesh. So what happened? This lamb, which is Yahshua the Messiah, it says he was the lamb that was slain from before the foundation of the world, or Yahweh sending his own son. We can even put it this way. Yahweh came 
in the lightness of sinful flesh are manifested in in a, in a physical body and he took on the sins of the world he said he condemned it that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us that means it's an inward thing read for the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk mm -hmm. not after the flesh but after the spirit mm -hmm. for they that are after the flesh do the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Right. So you see, it says they that are after the flesh do the things of the flesh. Now, what are when you examine the world out there, and that's what that is our fourth aim. It says to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion. So we can't escape that. Psychology, philosophy, modern practical, and occult science. So when you examine the world out there. And they are mining the things of the flesh. The carnal ordinances, some persons know, are in Hawaii because they had planned to get baptized and didn't get the chance to go and get water baptized. Some people, some per, some per, I, I, I have this, I have this friend on um, Facebook and we have been friends from primary school. And she was, um, when the church closed, she made a post and she said, that the Bible said if you have a faith as a mustard seed. And she said, I have a faith. She believed that she has a faith smaller than a mustard seed. But I was trying to reach out to her, you know, and I said to her, remember, Jesus said that these things must come to pass. And if it don't come to pass, then it would mean that Jesus is lying. And I just wanted to engage her in a conversation, then we can link. You know what? So she was saying, oh, why are they locked away? She deleted my, I thought she would have responded. She deleted my post. So I said, okay, she don't want to hear anything because I was just going to engage her in a conversation. Three or f about um, a week and a half after that, I saw her made another post with a crying emoji. The virus came and took her friend because the friend picked up the virus. And I'm looking at that and I'm saying, and I was just looking at that as, as a natural example. People might be looking and saying, oh, Trump passed the law and Trump said you are to stay inside and Trump says this and Trump says that. But don't we always say which governor or which president or which king from Genesis right down to Revelation that has ruled the world that Yahweh never set up to rule. Yahweh is in control. And that's what people don't understand. They think that, oh, the devil is doing all of this, and this virus is the devil, and because this virus is the devil, God does not have this thing on the land. But then if they were, and then you can understand why people think like that. Because when we were going to church, they took away the law and the prophets from us and gave us that part of the Bible that they said is the New Testament. So we really didn't go into anything from Genesis to Malachi. We just started picking up from Matthew. But how can you, and thanks be to Yahshua, he chose us because we were special. And he gave us this divine vision and revelation that we can go out and share it with others. Because now we understand you cannot go to a movie at the end of 15 minutes before the movie. Because you would call from Matthew, from Matthew down 15 minutes before the movie and understand something that is happening at the end of the movie. How do we know to analyze these things? Romans 1, 19 and 20 takes a natural to understand the spiritual. So there is so much in this. Continue reading. Six. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And that's what we're having. We're having life and peace on our inside. When your food is done, Yahweh gave you the chance, you run out and you get some food and you come back in. Gather enough that you don't have to go out every day. That's what he was telling the children of Israel when he was setting up the Sabbath. We are coming to the end of the sixth day heading on into the Sabbath. So gather twice as much. 
those are the principles. No, naturally, if you go to the store, usually per, usually you would have person go to the store every day. It's nothing to stop by the store every day. Do you see yourself doing that? No, no, that's not what is happening. If you, you run, if you run out of food and you get a chance, you go to the store, you have enough stock up for a couple of days. What I'm just saying, all of these natural things are, just look at the principles in it. We're heading on into the Sabbath. One day is with Yahweh as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. We have six days in a week, seven days in a week. And yet it says Yahweh rested on the Sabbath. That's what we're heading for. The Sabbath as a true rest. When Yahshua shall consume this physical and then we shall be one with him. Read. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against Yahweh. For mm -hmm. it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can it be. Do you see that? The carnal mind is not subject. It's at enmity. It's at war. It says it is not subject to the law of Yahshua. Neither can it be. Listen, brethren. Every time you have a problem, it's not spiritual. It's always carnal. What, what spiritual problems do we have? Because we are always on one accord most of the times with the preaching of the gospel. If something is said that is misunderstood, we always sit and we always try to trash it out and then come clear with it on the table. We don't have problem with that. If something is said that somebody don't understand, persons would normally say, oh, let me shelf it until Yahweh give me the revelation. So that was never our issue. Look at the things that people are always having problem with or we are having problem with. It's the natural. Sinka says this. Karen says this. Isn't that natural? Oh, I have to go do this. I have. It's always the natural that's wearing us down. The carnal man. That's what Lucifer feeds on. The carnal man. That's what wears us down. But we don't forget that when Yahweh, when he Lucifer attacked Job. Yahweh told him, you can eat his flesh, but you cannot touch his soul. That's the same thing Yahweh has on us, because we are a peculiar group of people. Read. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. They, because can you hear them? They that are you in the flesh? It means if you are carnally minded, you cannot please Yahweh. Because we are in the flesh now. But we know we are manifesting the things that Yahshua has us doing. But it's talking about if you're in the flesh and all your mind is naturally, you cannot please him. Read. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, mm -hmm. so, be, if so be that the spirit of Yahweh dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. Mm -hmm. and, if the and if the Messiah be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is alive because of righteousness. So Yahshua is in you, the body is dead because of sin. And you have seen a lot of things naturally is dead to us. The way, the partying, that's dead. The way of living, that's dead. You people, we just live because we know we have to survive. The, 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 the things that person would be focused on and the, the things that we would want to set on, persons have lost their job. What is that worrying you? Yahweh is El Shaddai. He has always been the Almighty provider. He said, look at the little lilies of the field. He said, they take no thought for themselves, but yet still they are beautiful. He said, all the folds of the air are mine. So he is the one that is preparing us. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And their, their shoes never worn. He has always preparing for them. Always taking care of Israel. Much more, he said, you are a peculiar set of people. What do you think he's going to do different for us? 
We just have to take comfort in that, that he is going to ride us through the storm. It doesn't matter what. So even those who have lost their job, take comfort. Don't worry about where the next meal is going to come from. Because Yahweh did rain down bread from the sky in the wilderness for the children of Israel when they left Egypt. He's going to rain it down. Wherever it is coming from, he is going to make that provision. He, he's just awesome. Continue reading. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Yahshua from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And that's exactly what is happening. He's quickening our hearts and our minds. Our heart and our mind has been quickening over the years. So this is why when you see the things happening, you can just you, you can just understand it. You see the revelation of it. That's what the phone that has carried for all these years, 40 other years preaching for us to get to know that this is the natural is not the reality. It's not. Read. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Okay, jump to the 18 verse. I mean, I heard it though. Okay, 18. For I reckon that the surroundings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So it says the suffering that you're that is happening now or you're going to know in the present time. Remember, it says present. It says it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us, because that's where Yahshua the Messiah will be revealed. Read. For the earnest expectation of the creature wait, waited for the manifestation of the sons of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him, who had subjected the same in hope. Because he subject the same in hope. The creature was made subject of vanity. So don't feel uncomfortable sometimes when the mind goes. The kernel mind is going to go. But that's why it says the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, he shall what, teach you all things and bring back to your remembrance. He is the one that's going to comfort us. So I want you to jump down to where... Um, it says, who shall separate us from the love of Yahshua the Messiah? That's a 36 verse. 35. 35? Mm hmm Okay, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of the Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? It's asking. Now, brethren, brace yourself for more to come. Don't look for this to be easy. Don't look for this to be easy. Brace yourself for more. This is a time when you know where you stand in Yahshua. You're going to be tested. You are going to be tested. We are going to be tested. Brace yourself. This is no joke. Just, in, just go back and read what the children of Israel went through. They had to, some of them turned and they crashed Moses and said, you took us out here, brace yourself. This is where you're going to be tested. But shall that separate you from the love of Yahshua? Read. As it is written, for thy mm -hmm. sake, we are killed all the day long. Mm -hmm. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Continue reading. I want you to go on to continue reading to the end. Nay, and all these things are we more than conquerors through him that loved us. For mm -hmm. I am not for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh, which is in Yahshua, the Messiah, our Savior. Thank you. And I'm saying, regardless of what is happening, none of this should separate us. None of this. It says neither death, nor height, 
nor creature, nor angels, nor principalities, neither death. Even if any of us fall by the death of this virus, it shall not separate us. Don't be weary. It's only the flesh that it can attack. That's all Yahweh said to Lucifer. You can only attack Job's flesh. So don't be surprised if it attack us. Some of us even have our natural sickness or ailment in this body. It's only attacking the flesh. It cannot attack your soul. Brethren, I'm truly happy that Yahweh has called me. Not only has he called me, but he has called all the brethren that is up in this teaching in righteousness and that we are one you know we are not we we see each everybody every day and we learn of everybody every day and we will not when this memory of me knowing Cynthia or Cynthia knowing me or Sherry or Joel those memories will not be after we take out this flesh but we will be one in Yahshua the Messiah and that's our only hope of glory when at the universal revelation, Yahshua being found in us. Thank you for the time. And as usual, all praises go to Yahweh Elohim Yahshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks everybody for coming out for our Zoom class this Sunday. We're going to continue to hold these classes every Wednesday from 7 to 9 and every Sunday from 11 to 1. Um, until further notice. So um, hopefully we, you know, everyone, can, as many people as possible that can join us, we're happy to have people um, join us for these classes. So uh, we can go ahead and stand and be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last couple of verses in Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever, let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.